Good day everyone, my name is Rizal A. Secretario. I'm your presenter for today. My topic is about functional theories of translation. In 1970s and 1980s, so a move away from the static linguistic typologies of translation shifts and the emergence and flourishing in Germany of a functionalist and communicative approach to the analysis of translation. This theory says that the theory of translation as a transfer between cultures is integrated into the theory of action because texts are produced to serve a particular purpose and person. That means that they represent actions designed to interact and communicate with others. Katarina Ries Katarina Ries, she is a defender of the Scopus theory. And also Katarina Ries' approach considers the text rather than the word or the sentence as the translation unit and hence the level at which equivalence is to be sold. There are four types of text typology, informative, expressive, operative, and the audio medial. Text type. Number one, informative text type. It is the content is the main focus. The text is a plain communication of facts, information, knowledge, opinion, and so on. Example of informative, informative text type, news report, users' manuals, official documents, non-fiction, and specialized books. Second, expressive text type. It is a form is the main focus. Author use aesthetic dimension of language, which is creative composition. Example, poetry, drama, and imaginative prose, which is novels, short stories. Third is operative text type. The text appeals the reader to act in a certain way. Both the content and the form are intended to provoke a particular reaction in the listener or reader. Example, ads, propaganda, materials, and tourist brochures. Last, audio media text type. The focus is on visual and audio representation. The audio media part supplements the other three text types with visual images and music. Example, radio and television programs and theater plays like opera, comedy, strategy, and so on. Next is Functions of Language by Carl Bowler. is one of the leading theoreticians of language of the 20th century, although primarily a psychologist, Bowler devote much of his attention to the study of language and language theory. There are three types of functions by Carl Bowler. One is communicative function. It is the reports, feelings, or attitudes of the writer or a speaker or of the subject or evokes feelings in the reader or listener. Example is poetry and literature are among the best examples, but much of perhaps most of ordinary language discourse is the expression of emotions, feelings, or attitudes. Second is representation function. The representational function of language is language used to exchange information, concern with relay or requesting information from Third is conative function. The conative function is allocated to the addressed. It refers to those aspects of language which aim to create a certain response in the addressed. The pathic function helps to establish contact and refers to the channel of communication. Some of these utterances only serve to maintain contact between two speakers. Next is Translatorial Action Model by Justa Holtz Montari. It is adapts concept from communication and action theories. 
and also aims to provide an applicable model to a wide range of professional translation situation and also views translation as purpose to drive an outcome oriented and human interaction and also the main purpose of translatorial action is to allow cooperative functionally adequate communication to take place across cultural barriers and also according to the model of translatorial action is the role of source text is a very limited next is the scopus theory scopus is a great word that means purpose or aim and also that theory was introduced in the 1970s as a technical term for the purpose of a, trans of a translation the major work on the theory is a book Vermeer co-authorized with Katharina Rees entitled Groundwork for a General Theory of Translation. And also the Scopus explains that each text is produced for a given purpose and should serve this purpose. The Scopus rule should speak as the follows like translate, interpret, and speak and write in a way that enables your translation to function in the situation in which it is used and with the people who want to use it and precisely in the way they want to function. The important point here is the scopus say how a text should be translated. It simply tells that the translator were to look for indications about the way to translate. Last is Translation-Oriented Text Analysis by Christine Nord presents a more detailed functional model incorporating text analysis. The text examines text organization at or above the sentence. The translation-oriented text analysis, it is more detailed functional model incorporating elements of text analysis. And also this text organization at above sentence level in order to balance the source of text. Transla Translation-oriented text analysis, these are the two basic types of translation text analysis, documentary translation and instrumental translation. Documentary translation, it serves as a document of a source culture communications between the author and the source text, which is the recipient. Example, literary translation, word for word or literal translation, like business contracts, and certificates like for for organizing or exercising translation second is instrumental translation it serves as an independent message transmitting instrument in a new communicative actions in the target culture and is intended to fulfill its communicative purpose without the recipient being conscious of reading or hearing the text that which is in a different form was used before in a different communicative situation this is the end of my report thank you